map fans, bathymetry bosses, coastal cartographers. If you haven't guessed already, that's right, today we are looking at some marine data and this was passed on to me by one of the students I tutor on an online course so thanks very much for putting me on to this and we're back at Google let us start by going emod net and we want seabed habitats there it is emod net seabed habitats now I've not looked at this properly yet um, this is pretty much on the fly so forgive me whilst I wander around the website Access data looks like what we're looking for, so I'm going to click on that. Ah, launch the mapper. That's what we want. And here it is. Obviously, this is a Eurocentric uh, interface, so it's just for Europe. And over here, looks pretty well laid out. We can zoom in, zoom out, full extent, download. And we have a bunch of different things we can do up here. And in the welcome, looks like we can use this data as a WMS as well, which is rather exciting. But let's dive straight into the map layers. EMED broad scale seabed, yes. Let's do that. And we'll just go for the top one, UNIS. Thinking about it. Boom, there it is. Look at that. It's so weird. It's like the inverse of what we normally see on maps. Really brings the oceans to life. Let's zoom in up here. Wow, lots of different habitats going on under the sea. So if we click on the key, yes, we've got a full descriptive key. Mm, very good. And of course, we can also download map data, which is very nice to see. I just want to mention the WMS again. Um, if anybody's not familiar with what this means, it is a web map service. So if you have your own online map, you can link directly to this data and just bring it into your online map. So if you're using Leaflet or something like that, you could just create a link to this and then you could put your own layers over the top of it on a web interface. Very, very cool. If you'd like to know more about that, drop me a comment on the YouTube comments and I will perhaps make a video of it. So let's have a look at the downloads. I'm going to download some map data, spatial downloads. I've not looked at this before. This is not what makes a good video. Video of man reading screen. Uh, all right, let's just select some layers to download, see what happens. What do I want? All the UNIS habitat maps. That looks good. We'll just do that one for now. Wow, there's so much data on here. This is brilliant. Thanks, Europe. Okay, reason for download. Uh, education, because I'm showing you guys what's happening. And I will put in my full name, Oliver Burdekin. And my email address, do hit me up if you've got any GIS questions. If it's a troubleshooting thing, maybe we can make a video to answer your question. That would be fun. Organization, we all know this. It's Bird GIS. And confirm that I agree with the TNCs. <laughs> Haven't read them, but yes, I do. All right, so filled in our info and let's just download this 15 meg not too big comes in a zip and where am I going to save it oh, in my demo folder and emod that's fine alright so this should come through in shapefile format because it's a vector layer and it's going to take a little bit of time while that's downloading, don't forget to hit the thumbs up, give us a like on the video, and please do subscribe. We're on a bit of a rush with the subscribers at the moment, it's all very exciting. And there it is, we have downloaded it. So with the data downloaded, the next thing to do is to extract it, so I'll right click, 7-zip, and extract files. It should choose a nice file path to do that. 
with everything extracted we've now got this emod folder I'm just going to have a quick look at the properties and it's one and a half gig on disk alright so if we click in here you might sometimes find some extra things there is a confidence excel sheet that could be interesting further investigation later I guess so let's just bring one of these shapefiles into Q and have a look at it so I'm just going to add a vector layer and browse to my emod folder I've got a filter on down here so that it's just Esri shapefiles that are showing we got the metadata too nice and I'll just choose this first one add it in OK and so yeah we have what looks like each different habitat type as a new shapefile. The other thing to do with new data always is to check your CRS. So I'm just going to right click, go to properties, and let's have a look. What have we got? The pseudo Mercator. So this is kind of like WGS84, but it is modified for web display so keep that in mind your EPSG here is 3857 normal WGS 84 is 4326 so just be aware of that if you're using it with other data but looks like a really good data source thanks a lot to Europe and the guys at EMOD don't forget to subscribe thanks a lot for watching and happy mapping